Hello, and welcome back to Bite-Sized Neo4j for Data Scientists. Today, we're going to conclude our series within a series here. Um, we've been looking at uh, RDBMSs compared to Neo4j graph databases, and we've been asking ourselves, why would we want to use a graph database? So let's take a step back here. We're going to ask ourselves that fundamental question. We've seen comparisons of the two, but now we're going to really get to the foundation of why graphs. Why would I want to use a graph? My name is Claire Sullivan. I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j, and here's how to reach me on the internet. As a reminder of the important links in our series, the first is how to create a free Neo4j sandbox instance. The second is where you can find all of the videos for this series, and the final one is the repository with all of the code. Okay, let's get back to our airports uh, tables here. This is um, the ER diagram for our SQL, and we have a bunch of tables here, and you can see how they're kind of linked together. Um, I've got airports as a table. I have routes as a table. Some of these tables, the routes look at connecting to integers. The other ones, they look at airport codes. I've got countries based on code and continents based on code and whatnot. Um, okay, that's all well and good, but why a graph? Well, first off, Graph databases treat relationships as a first-class entity. What does that actually mean, though? You'll hear it a lot, but what it means, I can search a graph database for individual objects, like searching for a node based on criteria, but I can do that in SQL as well. It's pretty straightforward. Now, the thing, though, that a graph database is different about is that all of the connections are key value pairs between different objects. So that means if I have an object, I also have everything that it's connected to. So if you think about what that would look like in SQL, that is a whole ton of joins in SQL. So let's go back here. I've kind of tried to indicate where those relationships might exist within our ER diagram. And this is actually what we have within our Neo4j uh, database, the has route relationship, the in country relationship. Some of these are kind of shaded out because we didn't use those tables to assemble them, but they're they're implied. Now, let me ask you a question, and I want you to think about it in reference to this ER diagram. Let's say you want to find all airports in California, which is a region within our graph, um, and you want to get all airports within the United Kingdom within two hops of those California airports, and you want to order that by page rank. Okay, now going back, if you go back through this series, let's think about what that means. You got to get the airports and the country codes. Um, the country code is what's in that airports table. You're going to have to join that on countries um, and get the description of those countries. You're going to have to look at I routes to join the airports to get the source and destination. Then you've got to do the two hop query, which we showed um, a few videos ago, and that's a multiple joins. Um, that's, uh, and then we've got to get the page rank, and the page rank, if you go back and watch last week, that's four joins. So I got page rank, I've got the two hop query, which is a CTE and a union, I've got the main joins that I just talked about, and then I got to join it on the final page rank calculation. That in my book is seven joins in a union. And we all know that joins in SQL are slow. We want to avoid them as much as possible. So people ask, how do I then know I have a graphy problem? Okay. And the SQL is going to be our hint here. If you have joins, and especially multiple joins, you have a graph problem. That's how to know that maybe your solution is going to be easier found when working with a graph. Okay, now just as a reminder, here is the, um, the graph model that we've used. We've got five different types of nodes. We've got a whole bunch of relationships connecting them together. Okay, let's go into Neo4j. And I'm going to answer that question. I want to know, um, like, like I said, how many, we're going to find all of those airports in California, and we're going to see which ones are within two hops of an airport within the United Kingdom, any airport, and we want to return those uh, airports ordered by page rank. So I've got some code here. You'll find it in the repository. And let me just copy and paste it in here. We'll just talk quickly through what it means. I'm looking for source airports that are in a region, okay, oopsie. Okay, they're in a region where that region is the US California, okay? And then I'm gonna bring that result forward, that source airport forward. And now I'm gonna say, here's my two hop relationship, has a route within one to two connections to a destination airport. And that destination airport has to be in a country named United Kingdom. So here I have a few different relationships that I've specified. You can kind of think these are like the joins, but it's all happening all at once, just based on the ability to use 
use those key value pairs of the relationships. And then I'm going to return my distinct destinations and I'm going to order it by page rank. Here we go. Okay, here are our results. These are all of the airports, let me zoom out a touch, that we can get to within two hops of California and any airport in California and we've ordered it by page rank so you can see um, London Gatwick has the highest page rank. If we were to scroll through here what do we have? We have London Heathrow which actually has a Wow, it has a lower page rank than Gatwick. Okay, so that's that's just a really simple query for how to you know answer what would be a very complicated question in SQL. Again, just come back to this multiple joins question. I want to thank you for tuning in. If you have any th questions or things you'd like to see in future videos, please reach out. We'll talk to you next week.